Merci. Thank you for that you are inviting us to come to you. And we pray that as we come humbly before you, as children in need, feed us with yourself so that we may be strengthened to serve you and love you and honor you and love others to represent you so that they may see you through us. Strengthen your children for the journey is long and the burden is heavy. We pray that you will strengthen us so that we will walk with you, learn from you, be strengthened by you so that you be honored and glorified through your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We turn to uh, Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. The invitation of Jesus. Matthew 11, 28 to 30, the invitation of Jesus. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. As we are headed for the year ahead, uh, we feel like this text where we are burdened, we are weary. Uh, perhaps some of you are strengthened, perhaps some of you uh, are more burdened as you think about the uh, responsibility ahead. What have I done? I came to this retreat and said yes to this responsibility. And uh, what in the world am I going to do? Well, uh, Lord says, words like come, uh, rest, easy, uh, sounds very encouraging to us as we look into this text. So we'll find some strength from this text for those people who are weary and burdened in heart. Seven things that we see in this text. First of all, the invitation. Come. That's the first we, word we see, verse 28, come. Ever since man sinned, uh, we've been trying to run away from God. But he's the one who comes to us. We hide behind the tree. We hide behind excuses. We hide behind unrepentant heart. We hide behind blaming. But God comes to us. And first, time, first thing that he says after he comes to us is, Where are you going away from me? It's negative way of saying, come. And we see... In this text, first word is come, inviting us to come. When we run away, we are in a failure layer mode. <laughs> failure layer mode means we are in fear, unhealthy fear. Uh, we are like that. When we are in failure layer mode, <laughs> we are in fear of something for self-protection, selfishness. That's why when you're in a failure layer mode, never you have good, good uh, motive when you're in a failure mode. That failure mode fear is different than fear of God, of His holiness, but it's more so, I fear for myself. I fear that I might lose myself. I fear that I might not protect myself. I fear blah, blah, blah. It's all selfishness. So when you're in a failure mode, it's never a good motive. When you're in a success layer mode, at least it has 50-50 chance it might be out of good motive or it might be out of bad motive. So 
Our goal is not to be in a successful mode. Our goal is to purely love God and love others. If you are like that, you'll always be in a successful mode. Just doing your best because you're not concerned about yourself. So Jesus says, come. Do not fear. Be totally relaxed. I am for you. I will strengthen you. I will empower you. Isn't that great? He comes. He says, come. May we heed to this invitation and go to the Lord. All the children of God said, I'm not done with the sermon yet. <laughs> Second, not only the invitation, but the destination. Destination, he says, come to what? Come to me. All we have to do is go to Jesus. Come to me. Uh, we are always going somewhere. Hopefully not running away from God, running to God. He says to the disciples, come to me. And then he says, then I will make you fishers of men. Follow me. I will make you fishers of men. I used to preach the sermon called, follow me. Follow me. Because Jesus said, follow me. What in the world does it mean, follow me? A good definition of leader is someone who can say, follow me. Uh, he's saying, Jesus is saying, come on, spend time with me. Come and be with me. I love you, I care for you, come. Follow me. Spend time with me, as he said. And Paul says, you know, in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, he says, follow me as I follow Christ. Basically, Paul was saying, follow my following of Christ. Uh, he says, follow me. Right? Then I'll make you fishers of men. I remember preaching that sermon. Then one day, I just finished it, follow me. I just keyed so much on that. One day, so one adult came to me after that. He said, Pastor Min, that's so discouraging. Because if you say, follow me, and we follow, uh, if, if definition of leader is someone who can say, follow me, uh, that's just, that we need to be that kind of example. But you need to preach the, you know, finish the verse. And I thought about it. What the person meant was, follow me. Then he says, I will make you fishers of men. Meaning, when we follow Christ, we are doing our best as much as possible, and we need to be example like Jesus, someone who can say, follow me. But when we do that, what happens? He makes us fishers of men. And we must remember that. All we have to do is follow Jesus. And other people will follow us. Then what happens in the midst of the interaction? He is the one who makes us ministers for the glory of God. I will make you fishers. And remember that. I will make you fishers. And if you come and follow Christ, what happens? He's the one who strengthens us, empowers us. I think that's kind of what Peter said when everybody was running away after Jesus said, if you want to follow me, you got to eat my flesh and drink my blood. And people got a little scared. So when people are going away, Jesus says to the disciples, will you guys run away too? Will you guys go away too? What does Jesus say? Jesus says, or Peter says, you have the word of eternal life. Where else can I go to? <laughs> Always run to Jesus when you're weary, tired. Tired, hard, difficult, want to quit, do not, never, ever, ever run away from Christ because you have no place else to go to. He has the word of eternal life. Always go to the right destination. That is me, according to this, this text, that is Jesus. Third, the invited. Who's the invited? He says, all you weary and burden who are the weary ones and the burdened ones again mentioned in Genesis chapter 3 uh, Jesus or oh, Jesus my mind's not working just like yours so we can you know maybe if I make mistake you understand the right way as we are making our mistakes uh, weary and burden Genesis chapter 3 uh, after man sins God comes to man 
and says, from now on, by the sweat of your brow, you will uh, work hard, toiling. Burden and weariness started because we sinned before God. Before that, uh, our hearts were always glad to serve the Lord. So objectively and subjectively, uh, uh, something happened so that it was hard for us to work. Objectively, the whole earth is uh, cursed and it became rebellious. Not only that, our hearts became rebellious. So serving becomes uh, weary and burden to our hearts. Why? Because we are sinners in rebellion against God. So the beginning of burden started because natural thing which is to serve God now became burden because we want to be served rather than to serve from now. So this is invitation to all the sinners who are working so hard to feed their heart motive, who are working so hard to be God. He says, all you weary and burden, stop working. Come to me. Uh, I will give you rest. I will give you, I will give you rest from your uh, insatiable longing to serve yourself. I will give you rest. So all the sinners who are working so hard who are weary and burdened, uh, are invited if you would come. So come, all you weary, burden, heavy burden, come to me, Jesus says. Fourth thing, the commands. Commands, what's the command? What are the commands here? Verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Take my yoke and learn. What does it mean? You know, it's a picture of a couple of animals work, walking together with yoke, this wooden bar on top of them, usually so that they can, uh, you know, take care of the fields, right? What happens is that usually the older animal knows how, where to work, walk, how to do, gets in yoke with the younger one so the younger one will learn from the older one so that old younger one will be trained to walk on that path. Uh, take my yoke upon you means Jesus is like that older animal and we are the younger animals. We walk with Christ and learn how to serve uh, like he's teaching us. He's saying, take my yoke upon you, learn of me. Come on guys. He's saying to his disciples, walk with me, be with me, follow me, spend time with me and learn from me. So all we have to do is be with Jesus. See him, picture him, fix our eyes on him. And we follow him. And that ought to be the same as in our ministry. We walk with younger ones. We walk with your small groups. It's exactly what Paul is saying. Follow me as I follow Christ. I'm going to walk with Jesus, so you walk with me. So in a spiritual manner, we are yoked with Christ. But in a visible manner, in our small group, we are yoked with our small group members. You're, you're going to be yoked with somebody today and you're praying. Uh, it'll be more, that person will be more, more like Christ. But uh, you should pray that you'll be more like Christ as you are yoked with someone else. Hmm? Take my yoke upon you, learn of me. Just walk with Jesus. That's the command. Be with him. Spend time with him. He will teach us. He will make us fishers. Amen. Fifth thing, the content. What's the content? What are we supposed to learn? Hmm? What is the content? He says, take my yoke upon you, learn from me. He says, for I am gentle and humble in heart. We like that word, don't we, in this retreat? I am humble and gentle in heart. What are we supposed to learn? We are supposed to learn the heart of Jesus. That gentle and humble heart. Remember, we talked about the weary and burdened sinner, weary and burdened heart. Heart that wants, heart that is burdened. Why? Because heart that is filled with sin. Because it's a heart that filled with Christ's heart, uh, who is gentle and humble in heart. Uh, heart that is filled with his holiness. Burden heart, our heart, heart that is filled with serve me attitude. Christ's heart, 
servant's heart. Jesus is saying, come and learn from me gentle and humble heart. But we have rough and proud heart. Christ's heart was heart of God who wants to serve, but we have a heart that wants to be God. That's the problem. We must have servant's heart, not a heart that wants to be served. We need to learn that kind of heart from Jesus. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. That's what we are supposed to learn. So we need to go to the Lord every day in the morning and be yoked with him from the morning and say, Lord, teach me how to walk on that path as you are walking. Help me to be yoked so that I will not go astray just serving my master, just serving, walking exactly the path that you're walking in. Help me to follow you. Help me to have that gentle and humble heart who wants to serve. And we need to pray that as we walk with him. Six, the proof, the proof. He comes, he invites us. So we are going to Jesus. We are the sinful heart that wants to go away into whatever we want and we don't want to walk on that straight path. But the command is we learn from Christ as we walk with him. And the content is we learn that humble and gentle heart so that we can walk on the path. Then what is the proof if you're doing that? Verse 30, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I think Jesus is talking about not only just objectively is it easy and light, but also subjectively it's easy and light as well. Meaning, as we are serving the Lord, when burden becomes heavy and it, is, it gets so difficult, perhaps you, are, you may be running away from the Lord. If our hearts are filled with lack of joy, misery, we're in a failure mode, we don't want to serve, all these things, what are we doing? It's a proof maybe you are not yoked with Christ. That's why I always, happy. I always uh, ask the people, are you thankful? Are you joyful? Are you grateful? These are really good signs of your yoke being easy. Is your yoke hard? Is your burden so heavy you cannot carry it? Maybe you're doing it by your own strength rather than the strength of Christ. When you're yoked with Christ, He's doing it. You're just walking with Him. You're not really pulling. He's doing it. He's doing it. If you do it by His strength, our service becomes easy. Haven't you ever experienced that? When you really serve the Lord with Christ's strength, everything is easy. When you really love somebody, it becomes easy, doesn't it? When you really somebody, aren't you just glad to do all those things for the ones whom you are in love with? I think that's what it is. Proof is that because you love Jesus so much, because you love people so much, because if you're in Christ and you have that humble and gentle heart filled with serve, serving others and love for others, you would do everything out of joy. That love gives us strength and joy and easiness in our soul because he gives a power called love in our hearts so that we can serve him. Jesus says, you want to follow me? You deny yourself. You carry what? In other texts he says, not carry your yoke, but carry the cross. Our yoke is our cross, isn't it? We are yoked with cross of Christ and my own cross. He did everything, but I got to carry my, I got to do my part and follow him. Jesus invites us. But notice it says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart. Uh, before that it says, I will give you rest. Rest. So, Jesus' invitation to rest here is not inactivity, but refueling. Because rest, definition of rest, is cease from burden in order to recover and collect his strength. Definition of rest, cease from uh, the labor in order to recover 
and collect his strength. There is always in Christ purpose for resting. That is to continue to serve. Our goal is not the rest. Our goal is to, by resting, continue to expand the kingdom of God. Go to the Lord in the morning. And be yoked. Rest in Him so that you may be refueled and strengthened so that your heart will be so filled with internal motivation. Wanting to serve, loving to serve, cannot help but to serve. Gush forth, thing. So that as you serve, you'll be filled with joy. Then what happens? No matter what, how, how great a burden is, Christ is carrying it with us. So it becomes easy and light. When you, have, when you are having a joyless service, make sure you are doing it. You know you are doing it on your own. Always do it with Christ. Amen? Seventh, the companionship. That's the mean you ran out of the verse. You can't get seven thing out here. <laughs> Notice I've been all following every word in the passage. That's right. That's why we got to go back because we forgot the first point from the previous text, previous verses. So 25 through 27 talks about our companionship. 25 at that at that time Jesus says, "I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned." To reveal and reveal them to little children. Hmm. Humble, gentle children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. And then 27. She says, All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son. And those whom the Son chooses to reveal to him. Right after that, right in the context, it says, come to me. Who's our companionship? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And when we come to Jesus, we are joining what? The family business. The family business. Hmm? And our Father wants to increase the family. And when we come to Him through Christ, we become children of God. And one heart at a time, we conquer. So that they will taste the love of the Father and the Son and the Spirit, which we exhibit in the body of Christ, so that people may come. And His kingdom, His family kingdom, will expand. Let's pray. The invitation, come, do not run away. The destination, come to me, Jesus says. We have to run to Jesus. Who's invited? All the sinners whose hearts are filled with evil motive. Command, be with me. Take my yoke, learn from me. We walk with him. We learn from Christ every day through his words listen to the older one walk with him be yoked with him what are we supposed to learn the gentle and humble heart servant's heart proof ministry becomes easy not externally because our hearts are filled with joy we cannot help but to serve gush forth praise that we sing in this retreat becomes gush for service through the year. And do you know what you're joining? The family business. The father and the son company. We expand. The kingdom. And that's what we're doing. I don't know about you, but I say, I'm in. I'm in the Lord. Lord, I'm in.
Are you? Pray to the Lord. Tell him, I enlist. My life is signed. Seal me, Lord, I'm yours. Write your word in my heart. My heart is engraved with your seal. No turning back. Let's pray to the Lord for a few minutes.